Since you all seem to enjoy my video about writing a melody using OpenAI's ChatGPT, I thought I should take it up a notch and see if ChatGPT can write some good old-fashioned four-part harmony. Now, of course, there are many ways of expressing harmonic progressions. But what I really like about writing four-part chorales as a challenge is that it requires you to think both vertically and horizontally. For example, this Bach chorale can be seen as a sequence of chords, or as four separate melodies on top of one another. In some cases, those melodies can get pretty elaborate, and it's a real art balancing the needs of four separate melodies while simultaneously creating coherent harmony. So let's see if a general-purpose chatbot that was completely not designed for this can do a good job. I asked ChatGPT to express the chorale as four separate melodies, formatted as lists of pitch duration pairs like in the previous video. I then pasted the result into a custom Python script using my SCAMP libraries for computer-assisted music in Python. By the way, I have an online course about composing music in Python. It's not too expensive, totally beginner-friendly, and it supports the work I do. Anyway, when I hit play, this is what I heard. Now this would have been pretty impressive had the prompt been to create a deranged version of Twinkle Twinkle that breaks all the conventions of four-part writing. As it was though, some improvement was needed. The first thing I tried to improve was the rhythm. I wanted a polyphonic texture like in the Bach chorales, where it's not just quarter notes all the time, so I asked for a variety of rhythmic values. Here's what I got. Technically, ChatGPT followed the letter, if not the spirit, of my requirement. Clearly, I needed to be more specific, and state that each part needed to have its own rhythm. Here's how that turned out. A step forward, anyway. Next, partly because I was curious if it would keep going with Twinkle Twinkle, I asked it to make the melody twice as long. Guess what it did? See these times twos over here? They just cause each of the parts to repeat themselves. The one interesting thing about that is that the alto and bass parts are an eighth note too short, so when they repeat, the alignment's a little different. But I can hardly give ChatGPT credit for that. Anyway, at this point I'm starting to notice a pattern. ChatGPT superficially understands what I'm asking, but it doesn't really get it. It lacks the ability to consider my perspective and why I might be asking for what I'm asking for. And why would it? It's ultimately a statistical machine, right? Anyway, I pressed on, explicitly asking it for a second half that's different from its first half. I also had it play the result up an octave so that I could hear the harmonies such as they were more clearly. This was a little better than I expected, which of course was not a high bar. But now it was time to address the elephant in the room, the harmony. It had struck me as strange from the very beginning that the opening chord, supposedly a C major chord, had an F sharp on the bottom. This means that there was a dissonant tritone between the bass and the tenor and the soprano, and a just as dissonant minor ninth between the bass and alto. My best guess as to why ChatGPT would do this is that maybe it was mixing together training data from C major and D major, but it was time to confront it with the truth. And fascinatingly, it kind of worked. I mean, no one would mistake this for the work of someone who passed undergraduate theory, but they might mistake it for the work of someone who attended but flunked out of undergraduate theory. I mean, check out this properly treated suspension. Don't look at the bottom parts. Just listen to how good the top two parts sound. To me, this revision shows that ChatGPT is able to, at least rudimentally, operate on the vertical dimension of music that it has laid out horizontally. That's kind of wild. So what if we changed the approach and started with the chords? Could ChatGPT pay attention to melody in that case? I changed up the format and asked ChatGPT to express the chorale as a series of vertical sonorities. I then plugged that into a different script, built to take that format. Here's how that turned out. In a word, weird. I had asked it for D major, and it said it was doing that, but the chords told a different story. I gave it some direct feedback, pointed out that its harmonies were all wrong, its bass and tenor were too high, the soprano didn't leap like I asked it to, and this time could it, on purpose, include some more interesting chords, like diminished and half-diminished seventh chords? 
If anything though, that just made it worse. Out of desperation, I directly gave it a starting voicing, as well as a voicing of a diminished seventh chord I'd like to see. That led to this beauty. Finally, I tried one last time to get some leaps in the soprano, which it did in the laziest possible way. That said though, by adding leaps at all, it was demonstrating that it could consider the horizontal motion, even when it was formatted as a series of vertical chords. So for the final test, I asked it to take this terrible chord progression and re-express it in our original format as four separate melodies. And guess what? It did it. It did it perfectly. So where do we stand after all of this? I was struck in my last video by the divide in the comments between people in awe of what ChatGPT could do and people who dismissed the music it produced as drivel. Personally though, I think both perspectives are true. It is incredible, and at the same time, it's so far away from what human beings do when they create. I think we had similar conversations when computers were first invented. In fact, every time a new technology like this comes out, it's magical and almost unbelievable at first, and then we get used to what it can do, and the distinction between the technology and us starts to come into focus. But again, what do you think? Has this second deep dive into the musical abilities of ChatGPT changed your opinion at all about what these models are capable of? What exactly is the gap between human ability and these tools we're creating? By the way, at the end of this whole session, I asked ChatGPT to rate itself, first in comparison to a non-musician, then in comparison to someone who's completed undergraduate theory, and finally, in comparison to a professional composer. You want to know what it said? Well, I'm sticking the answer in the patron-only version of this video. I know, what a tease, right? But the truth is, the main reason to sign up for my Patreon is because these videos take a lot of effort, as did the scamp libraries and all of the free teaching resources I've created for them. Regardless, though, thanks so much for watching.